Hey everybody, um, I've been out here working on my truck. I've had my son working on his motorcycle, so I haven't been videoing while I've been doing this. Um, he went and bought a 450 CRF or a CRF 450 Honda. Took it out to Sand Mountain and blew the engine to smithereens. Uh, I don't. Let me see if he's got it uncovered at all, so I can show you what he did. Oh, he's got it all, all covered up. But apparently, these have problems with their exhaust valves sticking open, and the piston hit the exhaust valve, broke it off, and then shot exhaust valve pieces through the cylinder walls, uh, through the piston. It was pretty dang bad. I think he's got the piston out. So there's the piston. Went right through the side. It's kind of hard to get that out. I'm guessing that's why the rings the way they are. But yeah, it had a pretty catastrophic failure. So I think he did, I don't know, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars of damage to a twenty five hundred bike hundred dollar bike. <clears throat> I feel pretty bad for him. Uh but he was working on that and I started wiring and separating the harness and I'll show you what I did. Critique me uh, if you must. Uh, I, I'm i getting so sick of wiring stuff that I'm having a hard time uh, motivating myself to come out here. I've been wiring panels out at the converter station for the last three months every day. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't mind it, but when I get home, I kind of just want to sit down and relax and watch some basketball, I guess. But this is what I have done. So I've wrapped it. I have some felt tape that I got off Amazon and I felt taped all of my wire. And it looks like this right here. Uh, so I've got it felt taped. I'll probably slide some of this. Uh, I don't know what they call this. That crap, but I, I don't know. Uniduct. <clears throat> but I'll slide some of that over this to protect it on this edge. I'm going to pin this down. Kind of back in behind. And then go across. Up through here, uh, what I did, I went through this is my front lights. This one goes down to the back. That's got my fuel lines, my fuel sending unit, all my uh, brake lights, blinkers and stuff. I went across, I wrapped this up. You can see how I wrapped it here. And then pulled out each one of the wires that comes up here. I think I've got my, no, I've got my tack, my AC compressor, I think is in here. Because eventually if I get AC, I'm going to have to put it right there. Uh, oil sending unit and the ignition to go to that HEI. This side... I've gone through, taped it here, made it look semi-presentable since the rest of the engine looks like crap. But I think this is the, it, the alternator exciter, um, the alternator to the battery, and I don't remember what the other red one is. It's like a choke cable. I don't know what that is, I think. But these are pretty well marked. This one, I don't know if you can see it's written right there in that shiny area. It says solenoid power. And this one, I think, is the ignition. Something, the starter. And I'll wire that right down in there. 
trying to figure out where, how do I route this so I don't melt all my wires? If I try and stick down in and come, I don't know. I've never wired anything and worried, wired anything like this and worried about heat. Do I bring it over here? And then down to the frame and then in. Uh, all the same, I've got to, I need to stay away from this, I believe. But I still have a lot of grounding I still need to do. I need to pull this stuff off. But it's where the wiring's at. This harness I got, I've got 50 miles of wire on here. So <clears throat> work with that. I'll show you the inside. So down in here, I was thinking about going through over here, but that would be out in the open. In the engine bay, this is kind of tucked in. I didn't think this would be in the way of where my foot is at when I'm stepping on the dimmer, which will be right there. Uh, get that. So that's my dimmers. No. My dimmer switch is going to be right here. I guess it used to be right there. But I'm going to move it down into here. Uh, and I'll have carpet and stuff over this and up this side as far as I can get it. But I've got my headlights and tail lights are in the top hole. And then this is all my engine base stuff. Still need to work on separating all of this stuff out. This all lives up under the dash, I believe. I haven't really started pulling on it. There's window power, cigarette lighter, door lock power. Yeah, I'm not going to use hardly any of that. But I need to figure out how to plug this thing in to something, anything. I'm not sure. But... I do have kind of a <clears throat> crude excuse of a print to be able to go through all this and hopefully get it in the right spot. But that's where I'm at on my wiring right now. And again, everybody, thanks for subscribing. I'm almost to 500 subscribers. It's pretty awesome. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope they've helped a little bit. Um, I know you guys have helped me quite a bit. So if you liked it, please subscribe and I'll keep making videos. Uh, most of this is for me anyway, because in the future I can watch and see how far I've come. I know going back and watching my videos from two years ago, where it was just a ripped apart S10 frame with an old truck sitting next to it. It's come quite a ways and I feel pretty fortunate to be as far as I am. But and hopefully you guys can see if I can do it, you definitely can, because I know nothing for the most part uh trial and error but you guys can do it too so thanks again for watching have a good so it's been a while um i don't know how i'll splice this video together but uh i've just really had a hard time wanting to come out here and wire after i've been wiring all day at work but I need to get this done. Uh, I've got some motivations, some others. Uh, I've got to get this thing running sooner than later. So I'm out here wiring again. Um, I'll show you some things I did. I've separated the loom out quite a bit and uh, dressed it up a little bit more. I got some other pieces for the alternator try and wire the alternator in tonight and then start trying to figure out the ignition uh, this thing's got a weird looking little switch or uh 
not a switch, but a plastic connector on it. And I think with the old school switch that I'm putting in, I'm gonna wind up cutting that, but I'm gonna have to bridge some wires and make sure that I don't cut the wrong thing. But again, ringing wires out all day to come home and ring wires on the truck. I'd almost, I don't know, I gotta get it done. So let me show you what I'm doing on my alternator and you can tell me if I did it wrong. So I got two of these alternator wires this one i ordered when i ordered the alternator this one came with my amazon kit but i like the heavier gauge wire on my charging wire uh, this is the exciter this one's my charging wire so i think i'm going to change this puppy out and put this guy in so what i'm going to do is bring look that Java in there. Whoops. Ah, dang it. So I'm going to plug that in. If I can get it to stay. I'm going to bring white to white. And then I think it's the, it's one of these two reds to that. And somewhere I got to put a fuse in, but I'll get to that later. So white to white, then one of these reds to that red. Okay, so I used the other one. This clips a lot better um, where it holds on. Uh, yeah, this is just Chineseium garbage. Uh, this one I bought off, I think I bought it with this on Amazon. It was separate, so it was a lot nicer. I really hate these crimpers, that's what I've got. Uh, I've got a nice set of Klein insulated uh, crimpers at work that I like because they're set up for these insulated butt splices and ring tongues. Ah, but I don't have it, so I just used it on here. Crimps down. I think pretty well. I haven't had any fell at work yet, knock on wood. But this, this one says alternator. Oh, we probably can't see it. Yeah, you'll not see it. This says alternate, the white one is alternator exciter. And this one says alternator power. So I figured the white one runs the exciter and the power comes off of there and makes its way to the starter and the battery, maybe. I don't know. We shall see if I get some voltage, right? So let me know if that's right. I'm going to dress this up. I left everything extremely long. I'm going to double it over on itself and make it look nice. That's my plan. And this wire here says it's for the choke. I don't think I have a choke on this. So I'm just going to tuck this back in and make a mental note to forget that that's even there. But it'll be in there. There, I got her all trimmed up and laid down in there. Uh, maybe, I don't know if there's like a heat shield or something. How exactly you go about anchoring that puppy down in there. I don't know whether to put this stuff over the top of it. That ship might have sailed. Or, so there's this stuff. Or come back and put this crap over it. I haven't paid enough attention at how anybody's done that. So there's my alternator. So I'm gonna use this battery tray. Uh, it's a tray that was in the truck when I bought it. I'm gonna have to come up with some way to strap it down. Uh, I'll figure something out. But I cut these out to go between the body 
in here so it doesn't sit and rattle and screech. But <clears throat> I want to put it right here. So I'm trying to think of a way to cover this because I really should have just patched it, but I couldn't find anywhere else to put the battery. I've got it sitting right there right now, but my exhaust needs to go through there. So that isn't going to work. So I need to put it up here and think I remember how much Bondo I did right here. I think I'm just going to bolt a plate on the inside across that. And then my battery will sit over it so you won't even see it anyway. It'll just be a battery inside. So that that's where that thing's going to live at. Uh, I know I got this ground strap here. Do I need to get ground straps like this to ground to my frame? Or I, I don't think this is a big enough gauge, but if I got like a... The ground strap I know is cheaper than going and getting, I don't know if that's number two, battery cable. Get that and anchor it, but I've got to get a strap to the body, I know, so I have my ground continuous. I'm thinking about getting these straps. Is that the right thing to be thinking? Um I know I need to put some more straps on my fuel line. I can't put it close to that. I might anchor it right here to that. But I don't know what to tie to up here. I don't want to zip tie and wire tie that to anything, but I don't want it moving all over either. Maybe a black zip tie here. I can see that being a noisy problem. Thinking I got a rod knock. That'd make me feel good. So, there's, there's that. And I did do something. I went and bought this thing because I'd really like to save and put in a Dakota Digital but I'd like to know what my temp, my charging, and my oil pressure is. So I got this just to screw down under the dash until I can afford the 800 to 1,000 bucks for Dakota Digitals, which will be a while in the future. So that's what I did, and I'll take think that that menagerie I put together on the back there that's gonna work on the back of my oil pressure gauge I believe but I've got to get that through the firewall too so that'll be in the future video but again I'm trying to get this done I really want to get it done there's uh, some people that want to go for a ride in it and I think it'd be pretty cool to be able to do that with them uh just them remembering growing up and driving in a truck like this with their dad uh I like to get it done and do that for for them and uh it's, and I'd like to drive it to work every day that'd be cool too but thanks everybody for watching I hit I think hit 500 subscribers, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's a mile mark I never thought I'd hit. So thank you so much for that. And I'll hopefully be posting more on how I wired this bugger. So thank you so much.